Ancestors has a lot to offer. Unfortunately, most of that fun requires a lot of trial and error. I'm Andy Burkowski for VGS, and here is everything you need to know to get started with Ancestors. Navigating the world involves you taking control of hominids 10 million years in the past and seeing them evolve and change based on your choices. Starting off as an infant ape, once you find a safe place to hide or your way home, you're now able to shift between tribe members by pressing the Y button and then the A button. These switches are incredibly useful when there's an emergency and you need to quickly go back and forth. Now you interact with the world through your senses. Pressing X allows you to iteratively go between both smell and hearing to identify threats, where different food may be and even where your own clan is. By pressing the Y button while in the Senses tab, this uses your intelligence. This feature allows you to identify key landmarks and memorize them for future travel. As you progress, these skills become much more heightened and acute, making for much less guesswork and a lot easier of a game. You are able to grab items around the world by pressing the A button. These items you find along the way can be used as weapons, nourishment, tools, and pretty much anything that you can think of. In Ancestors, you have the ability to manipulate these items and discover their alternative use. To alter or modify an item, you need to press the left bumper, which will move that item from your right hand to the opposing hand. While it's in the opposing hand, hold the left bumper to begin altering and release the right bumper at the right moment to craft a new creation. That moment is an audio cue heard here. Items that can be altered will only do so if you hear that noise. If you don't, then you have the wrong tools or the wrong item. Items can be and often are altered by other items. For instance, if you smash an obsidian rock against another obsidian rock long enough, you create, imagine that, a sharpened obsidian rock, which then can be used to alter sticks, creating a sharpened stick, a dangerous and useful weapon in the jungle, I'm going to have more of those useful beginner combos at the end of the video. Now, while navigating with your tribe, it's likely you'll encounter hostile creatures. Armed with a branch or sharpened stick, press A when the creature lunges, aiming yourself at the beast to possibly hurt and even kill the predator. If you don't have a weapon, the same button prompt occurs, but instead, the goal is to avoid the beast. If the fight seems unlikely to go your way, hold down the B button while in combat to intimidate and hopefully scare away the creature. If you are injured, you may have noticed three circles. The green circle indicates your energy, yellow your stamina, and red your life expectancy. Those circles will increase or decrease depending on whether you've eaten, drank water, or slept. First, your energy circle will decrease, then your stamina, and then unfortunately, your life expectancy, which will lead to your death. Remember to take a moment for your ape to catch your breath or to have a nap. If you don't, it could be deadly. An ape initially requires at least four hours of sleep and two handfuls of food and water to be content for the day. By this point, you may be wondering, what exactly am I even supposed to do in this game? What's the point? Simply put, it's to have babies. In order to progress in the game, you need to do all of the actions I just mentioned in front of children. The idea being, in a meta narrative sense, that these children are learning and taking these skills with them to the next generation. First thing you want to do to get a little busy is create a bed. In order to evolve and bang, you need a bed. Take three ferns and stack them into a pile, then press Y to start construction. The bed allows you to sleep and by pressing the Y button, enter the evolution menu. We'll dive into that a little more in a second. Basically, you're trying to activate as many nodes as you can while playing the game, foraging for food and fighting things, and then saving those nodes as you move to the next generation. Babies can only happen when an adult, not elder female, 
and an adult or elder male, they can't be related for obvious reasons, become bonded. Find a suitable match and groom each other by pressing the B button. Listening for that sound prompt you must be sick of by now. Once a bond is formed, you just need to bounce your way to the bed and mate, give birth, and rinse and repeat. An adult female Abe can only have two babies in her lifetime, so having several females is essential. Now, moving through the generations is a key part of playing the game. Go to the Generations menu in the Evolve sub-menu. This should allow you to pick as many nodes as you want, depending on as many babies as you have. So there isn't really much incentive to explore and earn new nodes without moving to that next generation. When you do so, your clan literally ages and those elders become dead and babies become adults. Remember, when traveling in the wild, you have to pick up babies piggyback style, having them see what you do. It's the only way to progress through generations and eventually evolve. Now, evolving is a process unto itself. There are a list of feats you are tasked with accomplishing. The quicker you do that, the quicker you evolve. Most of the feats are pretty self-explanatory, but by the late game, it will be essential that you've already taken your time and don't progress too fast from an area without discovering all of the landmarks. As you traverse the jungles and eventual savanna, remember if you find a suitable new place to live, make a new bed and settle in this area by holding down the B button. It makes exploring new and exciting tools and treats a whole lot easier. Now, all of this information should have given you the basics. Let's get into a bit more of the nitty gritty. There are certain debuffs you can get depending on what you've eaten and what you've drank, if you've fallen or if you've been sliced by a lion. Generally, if something is making you sick or vomiting, find a water source and continue to drink until the debuff is gone. If you have a broken bone or other injury, the leafed red plant will help heal wounds when eaten and help you if you're cold. It's usually found on the ground and in plentiful supply. If you are lacerated, this can be deadly within 24 hours. Fruit found at the top of tall trees, this honeycomb-like substance, can be applied to your wounds and save your life. The same with horsetail found near water banks and streams. Remember that if your clan is injured, they won't automatically heal themselves. Take the time and help your buddies out or they'll end up dead. Finally, I want to leave you with a lightning round of useful tool combos to help you ease through the millennia in Ancestors. Starting with Obsidian and Obsidian make sharpened rock. This rock can sharpen sticks, which are great in combat. It can break through different fruits and coconuts, and it can even butcher meat from dead animals. Having a sharpened stick gives you a plethora of options. You can use it on hidey holes to eat critters, to go fishing, to lift up stones, and of course, to stab a tiger in the face. Smashing any stone against a granite rock will eventually create a grinder, a very useful tool to mash up a variety of plants, including horsetail, which can be used to protect you against lacerations. Taking a fern and altering with your hand creates a poking stick, great for getting honey out of beehives and scratching those hard to reach places. That's what it says in the script, but I, I don't know if that is true. Now, if you made it this far, I wanna thank you by grooming you by pressing the B button. It's a lot, I know, but I truly believe once you master these basics, ancestors can really be a wonderful experience. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below.